so who is Grace J? Who is this person? Um, but yeah, I'm Grace J and Grace J is a singer. Uh, I'm an artist, a gospel artist particularly. I'm also a songwriter. Um, I'm a worship leader. I've been worship leading for well over 10 years in local churches that I have been um, a part of. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. A fun, easygoing person and just um, on a mission to ensure that I fulfill and live out my purpose to draw people to Christ through my music. So in a nutshell, that's particularly who Grace J is. Oh, my talent. Honestly, I discovered my talent at a very young age, and I want to say it probably was between the ages of five and six from the first time that I could actually hear my voice and hear that, you know, there was a possibility that, okay, I think I, think I have a good sound. Um, so as long as I was able to hear my voice from that age as far as my singing voice, um, I would say that's how long I, that, that was the time when I would discover my talent. And then through that, you know, other people would hear me sing and would confirm that which I heard. So people would hear me sing and then tell me, oh, hey, you, you can sing or you have a good sound, sounding voice. And so that confirmed to me that, okay, other people also could hear what I was actually hearing as well. And so, um, again, yeah, between the ages of five and six was when I actually discovered my gift. I've been singing professionally. I would say, I, 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 it started years ago. I started actually singing uh, secular music many years ago. And um, I started recording secular music, but it didn't really go um, anywhere um, just because um, God blocked all of it. He, he did. He blocked all of it for such a time as this season that I'm in now. Um, and so I haven't really been singing professionally per se for a very long period of time. But like I said, I started out singing secular music and then the Lord just reordered my steps because the plan and the purpose that he had for my life was for a kingdom sound. And I, um, at that time I was doing secular music, I was writing and I had very, very thick type of songs, very good songs that would have done very well in the secular market based on the feedback that I was getting from so many people who heard my music. But I know that, you know, God actually blocked it from happening and from me going that route. And honestly, I'm glad that he did because the type of music that I was writing at that time before Christ, before I was even saved, before I even came to have a relationship with him, that is not the type of music that I would have wanted people to associate me with even now. So I'm glad that it did not um, go the direction which at that time I was hoping that it would go. And so um, recently here, uh, within the last year, is when I've actually started to go a little bit more professional um, route with my singing and um, take it to another level, uh, being able to just get the music that God has put in me and give it out to the world to bless, to bless the world. So, uh, no, I do not have any other singles or albums um, prior to Working the Word. Working the Word, uh, well, actually I did. I had singles from, again, as I mentioned earlier, when I was doing secular music. Um, but Working the Word is my first gospel single that I have done. So I'm very, very, very proud of it. It's definitely something that um, has been in the works for, uh, for a while now, and I'm glad to have finally gotten it. So what else do I do apart from music? Well, um, I am actually also the owner of Afro India Dormants, which is um, an online boutique. And uh, we specialize in uh, unique ethnic accessories, uh, primarily merging African and East Indies culture. So I make a lot of handmade jewelry, earrings, accessories, and things like that. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I do. And so right now I'm in the process of working to get my online shop up because I've gotten a lot of requests for, for people to shop online and be able to have the ability to shop online. So very excited about that project. And for those who are interested in learning more about that outside of my music, um, you can definitely follow me on all my social media platforms at Afro Indie, that's I-N-D-I-E Adornments. Um, and that's on Facebook, um, Instagram, and then I'm also on Twitter at Afro Indie Style. 
Uh, what inspired Work in the Word? Honestly, I would say Work in the Word was inspired. It was it was a few years ago. You know, the Lord had showed me in a dream that he that 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 he had that given me um, something that I was going to birth forth. Um, especially for the young generation, for the youth, and and, and at, with that, he had given me a mandate at that time to to basically um, teach youth to be mindful of the words that come out of their mouth, to be mindful of the power in their tongue, to be mindful of the things that they say and that they speak. And honestly, working the word was just one of those things that it was a, it was a song for me that actually encourages me because it's something that I always have to remind myself that the word of God does work and that I have to stand on his word and uh, remember James 2.26 that says faith without works is dead. So it's one of those songs that lets you know that you have to put action behind your faith. And so, uh, and honestly, when I wrote Work in the Word, it was a song that just kind of came effortlessly in um, a time of worship and just kind of sitting, you know, with the Lord. The lyrics just started flowing out of my mouth, you know, just effortlessly flowing out of my mouth. And so at that point, I just started writing them down. And I was just like, wow, you know, this song is very, you know, easy, it's very catchy. And it was one of those type of songs that was, you know, that 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 I had the vision of being an anthem for people to always remember that indeed, if you do work the word, the word works for you. The song, the title speaks for itself. There's no mystery to it. It's everything is scriptural. Every declaration that is made in that song is based on the word of God and it's based on his promises. And just as the song says, the promises of God are indeed yes and amen. So it's one of those songs that is a reminder to you that this is what God says about me. This is who God says I am. This is what he says I have. And you can hold on to it in the midst of a dark place. You can even hold in. You don't have to be in a dark place. You can. Just, it's just one of those songs that you always have as a reminder that the promises of God are for you. They are for you. They are not for him, but he has given them to us to benefit from. And so it's just always uh, to be a daily reminder. Um, right now, um, yes, I am. I do plan on uh, the, the goal, the end goal, the ultimate goal is to uh, have an album, a complete album. And that is currently what I am working toward. Um, working the Word, of course, as I mentioned, is my first single. I'm currently working on a second single right now. The video for Working the Word is also out. Um, you can also see the video on YouTube. Again, you can search it at Grace J Music. Um, you can also um, see the video, the producer for the song at Fatty Productions. You can see it on um, his YouTube channel as well. But yes, I am. The goal is to work toward an album. It's a, a, a slow work in progress because we want to, um, at the same time, I just want to make sure that, that I put out music that, again, is going to bless the people in so far, I'm just very grateful and thankful for working the word and the impact that it, that it has had on people. I have gotten a lot of great feedback from that single. Um, so many people are being blessed by it. And that in turn makes me happy because at the end of the day, anything that I do, I don't want it to be in vain. At the end of the day, my, my, my goal and my mission with the gift that God has given me is to create music, not for itchy ears, not for to just satisfy any type of lust or desire of the flesh. But at the end of the day, I want the music that I put out to draw the hearts and the minds of the people back to God. I never intend to look like a typical gospel artist. I don't intend to sound like a typical gospel artist. And I don't... Um, have hopes of my music only being played on gospel radio or state radio stations or my videos to only be seen amongst the gospel you know um, video um, stations because at the end of the day it's the secular stations that I want to also penetrate because those are the people that I'm trying to reach I don't want to just stay in the church I want my music to get outside of the four walls of the church so that it can reach the people that it needs to reach and turn the hearts of the lost back to him ultimately that's what it is so that is my prayer that is what i hope that my music will continue to okay so musical influences and role models let me tell you one of my ultimate ultimate favorite artists uh worship artists is tasha cobbs tasha cobbs i absolutely love tasha cobbs 
I relate to her in so many ways with her music. I love that she creates simple music. None of her music is difficult. She makes simple music that's easy, that anyone can follow along with. And again, it does, again, drive your heart and your mind back to God. And that's what I love about her. I also love artists such as Marvin Sapp. I love artists um, Travis Green, Jonathan McReynolds. Um, these are people that I really, really love and look up to. I also love um, a lot of Hill song, and I love Carrie Job as well. So again, I have a lot of different artists that I love, but ultimately I am drawn to artists who I see are um, sincere and true worshipers. Those are the artists that I gravitate toward uh, majority of. So if I was to do a musical collaboration with um, an African artist, I would say, you know, some of the artists that that, that I do like, um, I like uh, C-Notch. I know she's even popular here in the U.S. as far as her music because we do have a lot of churches here in the U.S. that sing her music. And also, um, Nathaniel Bassey is another artist that, that, that I've heard his music that I really like um, uh, in Nigeria. And then even also outside of Nigeria, in South Africa, I, uh, South Africa, I love Benjamin Dube. I love Benjamin Dube. And I also love Jonathan Butler. So I would say off the top of my head, those would be the artists that, you know, that I would love to, to eventually meet and, and collaborate with if possible. By the way. So the biggest stage that I performed on, I would say um, I was at a church um, where we had different concerts and we had artists such as Martha Nizzi, we had Israel Houghton um, come out and so our praise team was, you know, shared the stage with the, the, these artists and so I would say that was the biggest uh, stage that I have ministered on or performed on and we also had another popular uh, South African artist that came at the time and it was a concert um, that we were having and that our church was hosting with these, these popular, very well known artists here in the U.S. And so I was, you know, definitely grateful to be able to, to grace the stage, the same stage that these, these popular artists had also uh, performed and, and ministered on as well. Um, let's see. Which stage am I looking forward to being on? You know, honestly, um, I, I do have a deep desire to be able to, to go far with, to go, to go far um, with my music in the sense that I want to be able to to share stages with some of these artists that I mentioned that I really, really love. These worship um, artists such as Tasha Cobb, such as Travis Green, such as Jonathan McReynolds, um, the Stellar Awards um, uh, stage, the Grammy Awards stage. Um, I would also love opportunities as well to go back to my home country because, you know, although I was not born and raised in Nigeria, I am um, a Nigerian. Um, so I would definitely love to, you know, be able to grace the stage with some of these artists that I mentioned to you, such as Sinaj and uh, Nathaniel Bassey as well, and be able to, to minister with them. That would be absolutely, absolutely amazing. Am I married and do I have children? Yes, 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 yes. I am married and I have been married for, it'll be 11 years this July. Um, and yes, I do have three children. So right now, my oldest daughter, she is eight years old. And then we have twins. We have a boy and a girl twins that are uh, two years old. So my hands are full. They are a blessing. Uh, but yes, I am uh, married, happily married, and I am a mother of three children. So what should my fans be expecting in the upcoming years? I would say, again, more music. More music, like I said, that um, will will definitely connect you or get you to a place that, that, that allows you to think of uh, the awesomeness of our creator, of God. So, yes, so definitely more music. Um, and also, I definitely want to really... Um, be able to just connect and interact more uh, with my fans uh, through social media so they'll definitely be seeing more of me um, interacting with them through social media but yes again I have another single currently in the works right now that I am recording and it should be wrapping up very 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 soon so be on the lookout again follow me on all of my social media platforms at Grace J Music that is Grace J-A-E Music 
You can follow me there at, you know, from Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, I'm there. Also, gracejmusic.com is my website. So you can always follow me there to just stay um, up to date and connected with, with what I'm doing. And um, if I'm ever doing any shows or concerts or anything like that, you'll be able to be the first to be in the know um, about that information. So again, stay tuned. A lot of great music um, coming your way. Um, and so, yeah, so you'll be seeing more of me and I hope to be seeing more of you as well. Peace out. Bye-bye.